from tangled mangroves and raging rivers to dark water holes and vast floodplains. Australia's waterways are complex, competitive, deadly. The riverbeds are battlefields where the vicious thrive. The marshy grasses are alleyways from where the cunning strike. A web of organised crime winds through Australia's deadly wetlands. These are the case files of Australia's most notorious wetland killers. Assassins, stalkers and con artists. Where there's water, there are animals wielding biological weapons. Each displaying cunning methods to capture and devour prey. Leading the lineup, the heaviest hitter of them all, the saltwater crocodile. River mouths are the gateway to Australia's wetlands. The brackish water of the mangroves, fringing much of the continent's coast, hosts an abundance of dangerous wildlife. But nothing is more formidable than the saltwater crocodile. known to friend and foe as the Salty. The world's largest living reptile, the Salty can grow to 23 feet and weigh beyond a ton. They are the undisputed rulers of Northern Australia's coasts. They have the muscle and the weapons. Their mouths are crammed with up to 60 lethal blades, designed for killing rather than chewing. Almost anything straying across their path is in danger of being eaten. Getting too close to a salty only happens once. To function with ruthless efficiency, these killing machines must run at the correct heat. Saltwater crocs work to maintain a constant body temperature of around 89 degrees Fahrenheit. But they must prevent their brains from overheating. Their gaping mouths enabling evaporative cooling. Although the crocodilian brain is small, salties are capable of learning, observing the habits and feeding patterns of those they stalk. Study begins at a young age. Juvenile crocs are known to target a peculiar fish that can walk on dry land. The mudskipper. Mudskippers crawl from the water at low tide, escaping the dangerous world below the surface. Before emerging, they enlarge their gill chambers, filling them with water. The chambers seal tightly to keep the gills moist allowing the fish to breathe on land. But escaping the water doesn't free them from all its dangers. Juvenile crocodiles hone their hunting technique by stalking mudskippers.
It's perfect training before they graduate to much larger prey. It's mid-morning. Having warmed up, the boss croc and a member of his harem head out separately to hunt. Fast swimmers over short distances, salties can reach 18 miles an hour. They move up river, each in search of a different meal. Water buffalo wander across the wetlands. Introduced from Western Asia, they now run wild. They graze on aquatic grasses and other wetland plants. The males can weigh up to one ton, eating up to 66 pounds of vegetation every day. As the heat slowly rises, the buffalo move to the water to drink and cool down. The female croc sees them. She stays hidden, waiting for her moment. Crocodiles haven't changed much since the time of the dinosaurs. They're designed to ambush. Only her eyes, ears and nostrils are exposed above the waterline. But moving in for the kill, she disappears completely. Muscles constrict her nostrils and her throat is closed off with a flap of skin, preventing water from entering her lungs when she opens her mouth. She targets one of the smaller buffalo that has wandered in too deep. The notorious death roll finishes the job. Meanwhile, the male has come across another thirsty local. A wallaby, desperate for a midday drink. The reptile's approach is silent. The wallaby wanders into the boss croc's kill zone. The beast hurtles from the water at 12 miles per hour. He can't move his jaw from side to side and chew like a human. The only way to break up his kill is to shake the carcass to shreds. The crocs each return to their home among the mangroves to digest their meals. While the saltwater crocodile relies on brute strength to capture its prey, another more diminutive hunter has evolved a highly skilled approach. The archerfish. Omnivorous, opportunistic, and an expert marksman it will consume anything floating in the water, but has developed an extraordinary skill for hunting prey far beyond their aquatic domain. A master of physics, the archerfish can make lightning quick calculations to perfect its aim and dislodge prey. A garden orb weaver spider has selected a branch to form the foundation of its web. Little does it know, the new property is well within the fish's accurate six-foot range. 
When eyeing its quarry, the archer must compensate for refraction. The bending of light as it passes from air to water. Viewed from below, the target isn't exactly where it seems. Despite the accurate shot, the spider manages to maintain its grip on the branch. Compressing its tongue against a groove in its mouth, the fish creates a tube to funnel the water. A special cover over the gills rapidly snaps shut, forcing the water through the tube. Once again, the spider clings on. This archer must also account for the curved trajectory of the water jet. Letting gravity bend the shot toward the target. Success. While the archerfish employs precision ballistics to dislodge its quarry, the peculiar platypus homes in on the electrical signals of its prey. The estuaries are fed by a network of streams. As the water shifts from salty to fresh, New habitats support distinct interactions between hunters and the hunted. Moving upstream, one finds a true wetland oddity. Shy and elusive. The platypus. The platypus builds his burrow just above the waterline. When the coast is clear, he escapes his den for a day of foraging. Underwater obstacles are no challenge for this dexterous diver. Even though he's well suited to aquatic environments, he's a mammal and needs to come up for air every 30 seconds or so. Underwater, he closes his eyes and seals his nose yet is still a highly effective hunter. His bill is covered with about 40,000 electroreceptors that detect the faint electrical signals emitted by prey. He combs the riverbed with his bill, searching for any pulse. The first meal for the day a tasty worm. Nourishing, but far from enough. He needs to eat about 20% of his own weight every day. He'll store extra fat in his tail, up to half his entire body's weight, providing power for extra bursts of energy. Faint electrical pulses belie the presence of a crayfish. The crayfish tries to escape, but the platypus follows his electrical signal. One crayfish down, but it isn't enough. A platypus spends around 12 hours a day searching for food. But this feast is about to be rudely interrupted. It's mating season, and another male has swum into his territory. He'll need to vanquish the potential rival. When it comes to combat, the males are well equipped for a knife fight. They both carry concealed weapons a venomous spur behind each hind foot. The tussle ends quickly. The challenger escapes the fight, swimming downstream in search of another mating ground. 
the victor can resume gorging on crayfish. By sunset, the platypus has had his fill. A day of foraging and fending off a rival has earned him a well-deserved rest. Elsewhere, below the surface of a slow-moving stream, lies another battlefield. This hardened bully feeds on the dead and the dying. Few species would challenge the freshwater crab. Its armour protects soft tissue, and even its eyes can be retracted when threatened. Its claws are weapons for attack. However, the crab shares the river with an unlikely rival. A leech. A tiger leech. No armour, no obvious weapons, yet this leech is deadly. At just two inches long, it lives up to its name. The leech is stealthy. Seeking out the chemical trails of potential prey. The crab sees movement amongst the detritus. A would-be victim. The leech seems wary and keeps its distance from the well-armed aggressor. watches and waits as other leeches gather nearby. The crab moves in to attack. But a second leech arrives, seeking the crab's juicy insides. The crab decides that attack is the best form of defence. Its claws could do serious damage to a leech's soft body. But the leeches are slippery customers, covered in mucus. The leeches pause their attack. Only for a moment. This leech is hungry. It manoeuvres behind the deadly claws and tries to latch on. The crab attempts to shake off its attacker. A master at breaking and entering, the leech has found a chink in the crab's armour. Once it strikes soft tissue, it tears into the flesh, injecting an anticoagulant. The leech begins to suck out the crab's vital fluids. The crab's struggle is futile. Its life is literally being sucked away. The leech will gorge itself consuming up to five times its original body weight. All that remains of the crab is its armour and the weapons that proved useless against the aquatic vampire. The leech won't need to feed again for months, even a year. Whilst micro-monsters battle it out in the streams, 
larger predators rule over the isolated waterholes. This next wetland hunter will pursue prey over any obstacle. Australia's deadly wetlands shift with the cycle of the seasons. The creeks and rivers often change course, leaving behind isolated bodies of water. These waterholes are centrepieces to a mosaic of terrains that require multiple talents to traverse. Amongst the thick grasses that surround the waters, a serpent assassin seeks its next meal. Those brown stripes and its highly aggressive nature have earned it the name tiger. Instead of claws, it wields fangs. One of Australia's deadliest snakes, tigers are responsible for the second highest number of bites to humans. When untreated, half of all tiger snake bites result in death. Equally adept at hunting in water as on dry land, it swims with ease and can stay submerged for at least nine minutes. Stalking fish and amphibians. Tigers have been known to climb 29 feet from the ground to claim bird prey. Today, the snake has been spotted. The honey eater sounds the alarm, alerting others to the threat. A missed opportunity. The snake will need to seek a meal elsewhere. The brown rat is an introduced rodent, abundant in these grasses. Tiger snakes play an important role, preventing their population from blooming beyond control. Tiger snake's fangs are hollow. It injects a complex cocktail of toxins, one of the most potent of all known snakes. Some components in the venom attack the rat's nervous system, paralyzing it. Other ingredients target the rat's blood, causing internal hemorrhaging. Having consumed its prey whole, the tiger snake seeks out a quiet place to digest its feast. The tiger snake isn't the only reptile to conquer the diverse terrain around the waterholes. On the fringe of a billabong in Australia's north, Another solar-powered stalker soaks up energy for the day. Never far from a source of fresh water, a Merton's water monitor will eat almost any suitably sized animal that crosses its path. With strong legs, it navigates the rocks. Its long claws and powerful tail fend off rivals during ritual combat in the breeding season. It hunts both on the land and in the water. The tail is both propeller and rudder. The water monitor detects the odour trails of potential prey using his tongue a trait he shares with the tiger snake. The appendage is split in two, each tip flickering separately, 
maximizing the amount of air the monitor can sample, but also providing directional guidance. The scent particles are transferred from the tongue to a chemoreceptive organ located in the roof of the mouth. The monitor has big teeth for ripping apart larger prey, but smaller meals are devoured whole. Merton's monitor absorbs the last of the sun while it digests, surveying the landscape it has so easily conquered. While venom and claws might rule the water holes, other wetland invaders secrete toxins from their skin or strike from the sky. This floodplain fighter simply squeezes the life from its victims. Hundreds of large rivers snake their way across Australia's coastal plains as they flow to the sea. Tropical monsoons drown the land, transforming these plains into a vast expanse of shallow wetlands. A nocturnal water python patrols the soggy land surrounding the river's edge. The python can go for two years without feeding, shrinking its gut to reduce the amount of energy it needs to survive. It's been a long time between meals. The python's appetite needs to be satiated. And there's a perfect target scurrying about. A Rakali, a native water rat and wetland forager. Like the python, it prefers nighttime ventures. It will scoop up crustaceans and pounce on the opportunity of an easy muscle. It then slinks back to a regular feeding site to consume the meal. The water python stalks its prey. The snake's mouth is surrounded by scales that can pick up the heat signatures emitted by warm-blooded victims. In Australia, only constrictors, like the python, possess this sense. It receives a faint signal from the Rakali and closes in. There's no escaping the python's suffocating grasp. Its coiling body forces the water rat's blood pressure to soar. The rodent's heart fails to pump blood to its vital organs. The python squeezes until the Rakali is dead. The snake should be wary when consuming its prize. These wetlands are full of thieves. The python's lower jaw bones aren't fused together at the front. Instead, they're held together by an elastic ligament, which allows for an exceptionally wide gape. Teeth in the lower jaw then rake the food back into the throat before waves of contracting body muscles push the food down. The snake's gut quickly kicks back into action, 
producing powerful enzymes and gastric juices that slowly digest the Rakali. The water python slithers from the scene of the crime. In search of somewhere to digest in safety, far from its own floodplain predators, both in the water and in the air. The floodplains are home to a multitude of bird life. However, the water birds must remain vigilant. Predators stalk these skies. The white-bellied sea eagle is a versatile bird of prey, feeding on almost anything, from snakes and small mammals to other bird life. However, the eagle's diet is mainly aquatic. The white-bellied sea eagle glides with its wings stretched out letting the thermal currents do the hard work. It spies a body of water, an excellent source for a fresh fish meal. The sea eagle searches for the perfect vantage point and launch pad. The bird factors in height and its relation to the sun's position in the sky. Perched, it studies the water below. It has keen vision, with eyes nearly one and a half times larger than birds of a similar weight, enabling it to distinguish objects extremely far away. The sea eagle circles directly towards the sun, minimising the chance that its shadow might give it away. A clean snatch and grab from a master aerial predator. But the sea eagle must select its meals with care. Not all marsh-dwelling prey is safe to consume. The creatures of the floodplains are under attack by a nasty intruder. The cane toad was introduced to Australia in the 1930s to control pests feeding on sugarcane. Unfortunately, the toads preferred to consume the native wildlife. Cane toads leave a bad taste in the mouths of would-be predators. So, they've been left to run rampant. This male is a gluttonous brute. If he can swallow it, he'll eat it. He hunts without grace or subtlety. Inside his mouth, glands coat the tongue in sticky fluid. The tongue flick lasts only 10 milliseconds. By depressing his eyeballs into his mouth palate, he forces the meal down. In these dangerous waters, most creatures as small as the toad keep a low profile. This brute, however, enjoys his meal out in the open. Because this toad is full of more than just swagger. His defence oozes from his skin. Glands behind his eyes secrete a deadly hallucinogenic toxin. Unwary attackers suffer a long, drawn-out death. K-9 
cane toads can live up to 15 years. And while adults tend to be thuggish loners, younger generations knock about in gangs. They swarm over the marshes, devouring anything in their path. While native creatures tend to give these toxic pests a wide berth, the young toads do have one wetland enemy. The keelback snake. Endemic to Australia, these snakes hunt toads, albeit with middling success. Keelback snakes carry a genetic tolerance to cane toad toxin, at least in small doses. This trait is inherited from ancestral keelbacks that evolved among toads in Asia. The smaller the toad, the fewer toxins it produces. But something's amiss. The toad is too big and the poison too strong. If the keelback had devoured the toad, it would have followed a multitude of native predators to an early grave. While the keelback might not always come out on top against the cane toad, there are others that do. Ants are among the few native species unaffected by the toad's toxins. These minute warriors wage war in armies. With strength in numbers, sharp mandibles and caustic fluid fired from their abdomens, they have overcome a toad. The toad's natural defence of standing still and letting his poison deter attackers only makes their task easier. Within a few days, there will be nothing left but bones. A fitting end to an invader that doesn't belong in any of Australia's wetlands. The cane toad may be overcome by the smallest of warriors, but upstream, larger killers wait for the perfect moment to strike, while others utilise cunning to ensnare their prey. The sprawling floodplains of northern Australia's coast are fed by rivers and streams that flow down from the inland hills. These tranquil waters are filled with their own sketchy characters. An arachnid con artist stalks the foliage surrounding the waters, searching for a meal. The Porsche spider may only be half an inch long, but what she lacks in size, she makes up for in pure cunning. The Porsche's preferred prey? Other spiders. The larger St Andrew's cross spider builds a web that reflects ultraviolet light, attracting flying insects. But today, the web has caught the attention of the Porsche spider. An intelligent stalker, the Porsche analyzes the vegetation surrounding her victim's web. She determines the best vantage point from which to attack. The Porsche spider's mottled appearance mimics the forest detritus. The spider enhances the effect by imitating a leaf caught in the breeze. If the Porsche is sighted, she will simply blend into her surroundings. 
The clever Porsche spider plucks at the strands of the St Andrew's web, imitating the struggling vibrations of insect prey. The St Andrew's cross spider moves in to investigate. With her quarry lured right where she wants it, the Porsche returns to her vantage point, the optimal position from which to attack. She can calculate distances with extreme accuracy. The Porsche spider injects her lethal venom and digestive enzymes, drinking the insides of her victim leaving only the husk of its exoskeleton. It's an impressive display of cunning and deceit that enables this con artist to overcome a meal twice its size. Below the scene of the Porsche's crime, the placid waters host another forest hunter. The freshwater crocodile. This smaller, slender cousin of the salty might not look dangerous. Unmoving, silent, but don't be fooled. This croc has speed and power. But patience is its true virtue. It favours the sit and wait method of hunting. It allows its prey to come within range, moving with speed only when required. The freshwater crocodile will eat just about anything it can find in the shallow waters of inland streams. With a perfect hydrodynamic design, it propels itself through the water with a muscular tail, making up half its body length. But like all reptiles, freshwater crocodiles are ectotherms, gathering heat from their surroundings. In the morning, the smaller turtles gather energy faster. A missed opportunity. But this crocodile isn't too fussed. It knows that in this wetland, there will soon be other prey arriving from above. Fruit bats, otherwise known as flying foxes. These shady dealers prefer to do most of their business at night. They hide from the sun throughout the day. Flying foxes live together, huddled in large colonies. As the sun climbs higher in the sky, they compete for shade. They're all at risk from the same danger dehydration. They need water. When evening comes, the bats prepare to leave the roost. Before they can eat, they must drink. They collect water by swooping low onto the surface, drenching their fur, so they can lick off the moisture when they return to the roost. Lurking below, a crocodile waits. After a full day in the sun, it's charged up, 
and hungry. The crocodilian metabolism may lack stamina, but it still powers explosive bursts of speed. Just missed. This bat knows the croc is on the hunt, but desperate with thirst, it takes the risk. It doesn't take long before other freshies join the feast. As the darkness descends, the surviving fruit bats head out across the forests. Searching for fruit up to 30 miles from the roost, they will carry seeds far from the parent trees. Flying foxes play a crucial role in distributing fruit trees across the forest and maintaining the habitats of deadly Australians below. These waterways are the lifeblood of Australia. From the highland streams to lowland floodplains, isolated waterholes and brackish estuaries. Each environment sets the stage for complex interactions between predators and their prey. Whether it's a high-speed chase and a venomous bite, or an assassin's ballistic skills. Each adaptation is honed to provide a predatory edge within a particular niche. From the forests to the sea, Australia's wetlands are truly deadly.